Here's an inside look at my two holding tanks for my awesome plants that I have for sale on jacobsaquarium.com. All right, so you can probably tell that the audio quality has kind of diminished a little bit, and that is because I'm using the integrated camera, or <laughs> see, still can't talk, integrated microphone, rather, on the uh, camera to uh, record my voice. So I apologize if, uh, you know, you guys are sensitive to audio um, and this audio is not up to par for you, but uh, nonetheless, this is going to make it easier for me to just talk and show you guys my two holding tanks, okay? All right, so first we'll start out with a little bit of history about both of these tanks. Uh, the 50 gallon was a t is a tank that I've had for quite some time now. You've seen it in lots and lots of my videos. This used to be a goldfish tank, a discus tank, a really nice planet tank, and you know, it, it, it was out of commission actually for a while. And then when I started this plant business, I decided, you know what, let's use the 50 for an, oh, another holding tank so I can store more plants. So that's what I did. Um, and it's a great tank, you know, it's, it's still in really great shape. You know, it's made by um, Vizio, uh, Advanced Aqua Tanks. And they're actually a company uh, out here in Southern California, so pretty close to me. And I actually have a business relationship as well, which is kind of cool. So uh, they make great tanks, and uh, this tank is held up uh, very nicely. This is a 50 gallon tall, so it's not really meant for, meant to be a planted tank, but I've compensated by lowering the water level so that the light can penetrate uh, easier through the water and uh, grow the plants a lot faster. Now as far as filtration, I'm using a Hydor Model 450 canister filter. Now this filter is absolutely awesome. It does a really great job of filtering everything out. This is the one that I talked about in a previous video that I got off of eBay for a really great deal. Um, I encourage you guys to look on eBay by the way if you're looking for aquarium products because you can find really great stuff for really cheap prices. Uh, so it's a great filter, does a great job, extremely quiet, being that, you know, the, both these tanks are in my room and I like it to be quiet at night when I sleep, <laughs> you know, that is uh, very, very good. So it's a quiet filter, does a great job, and I mean, as you can see, it makes the tanks, uh, or this tank rather, crystal, crystal clear. Now inside the tank, we're, I'm using silica sand for substrate, and the reason behind that is just because since this is a holding tank, so many plants are coming in and out, you know, uh, weekly, <laughs> you know, sometimes even sooner than that, or more than that, I should say, uh, the substrate would just get way too dirty if it was a regular planet tank, I, and I wouldn't be able to clean it properly. So I switched to silica sand instead of the Eco Complete that I had in here before, and it's given me the ability to keep things so much cleaner in this, in both of my tanks actually. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot better, you know, for the water quality and stuff like that. So it makes things a lot easier on me. Now, uh, we went over filtration, so we'll go over what uh, this thing is. This is an Eheim Skim 350. As you probably guessed by the name, it is used to skim the top of the water for those nasty proteins that build up, meaning the water is crystal clear in my aquariums, which is a, a absolute uh, blessing because the, uh, the uh, light <laughs> the light can penetrate better uh, through the water and uh, grow the plants better. Speaking of light, we are using a um, Kessel A150W Amazon Sun for this side and a Kessel A360W Tuna Sun which is pretty cool. These are great lights. You guys have seen them in my previous videos and uh, they have done a great job keeping the plants healthy while they're here for the short amount of time that they're here in my house. And uh, you know, they just, they're just awesome. They give me so much space in the tank, you know, because there's no, nothing obstructing anything. It's just, it's really, really nice. They do get pretty hot. Uh, so if everything is closed up in my room, it can get kind of warm in here. <laughs> kind of feels a little bit like a sauna, but you know, I really don't mind. I don't, I don't care. It, and it does have a fan actually to circulate the heat, so at least the light stays cool, but I don't. <laughs> uh, this light is tunable. I can tune the color. You can see it gets kind of a cooler color temperature, or I can turn it so that it's nice and uh, warm. I can also adjust the uh, brightness. So if I have Anubias plants under or in this tank, the brightness will be probably about that. Now if I have highlight plants, I can turn it all the way up and make it nice and bright. So you can see, this is low, and that's high. And this is colder color temperature, and this is warmer color temperature. So pretty cool lights, I love them. Uh, ever since I 
I got my first Kessel LED, which was the A150. I've never thought about buying any other lights. They're just so perfect for growing plants and for planted tanks. Uh, by the way, if you guys would like to buy a Kessel LED, I have them available on my website, jacobsaquarium.com. Link will also be in the, in the description for that as well. And uh, that's pretty much it for this tank. Um, you can see also that, oh actually that is not it, we got some, uh, we didn't go over CO2. <laughs> uh, but first, I wanted to say that uh, you can see that I have the input back into my tank kind of, you know, a, a weird way. <laughs> no, I'm not using a spray bar, I'm not using one of those right angled, you know, outlets back into my tank. I'm using one of these. The reason why is because I've noticed, well, for, for one thing, you know, I would not be able to keep the water level this low if, if I just used a spray bar or a regular 90 degree, you know, outlet. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that, you know, when you have water spraying at the top and, you know, these, these outlets here are not, they don't go down too far in the tank. There's a lot of water movement and a lot of thrashing around with the water. And as you guys know, that creates a lot of oxygen, oxygenation. <laughs> And that could deplete CO2 levels. So to avoid that, I just kind of keep the water level down here where it doesn't really disturb the top too much. Makes things, you know, somewhat nice and calm as you can see. And, uh, you know, it's just so much better. And also when I'm doing water changes, I could literally change, you know, 25% of the water and just move the outlet down as well as the inlet, as you can see back there, and still keep the filter running while I'm doing water changes. Normally with a normal tank, you wouldn't be able to do that because you'd have or a normal uh, filtration system, you, you'd have water coming out at a 90 degree angle or a spray bar making a big mess over here. So to avoid all that, since I change water so often, because these are holding tanks, they do get quite messy. Um, I just, I did that, my own little uh, doohickey thing there. <laughs> now as far as CO2, I'm using a ISTA Max Mix uh, CO2 reactor to uh, inject CO2 in my aquarium. And that is coming from a five pound CO2 tank, which we are gonna see in a minute. Um, as I've said in my previous videos, the ISTA Max Mix uh, CO2 reactor is a great reactor. It is just cheaply made. Uh, it is not the best as far as uh, construction, but it works and that's, that's what we need it to do. So that's what I use to inject CO2 in the tank. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the 80 gallon. Ooh, look at that bad boy looking at me. I, I see ya, I see ya, here I come. <laughs> All right, now as far as lighting, um, I got a Kessel A160W um, 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 Tuna Sun. I, I, get, I get confused if they're Tuna Suns or Amazon Suns, I, I forget. I forget sometimes, I apologize. But yes, uh, Kessel LED, really great LED, also tunable, I can tune color or sorry, uh, brightness. You can see that it's kind of low and I can turn it all the way up. Yay, brightness. <laughs> and I can also tune color as well, just like the 360 and turn it back to a nice warm color. It looks so cool inside. Look at the warmness. Yes, okay. Uh, I, I'm also using uh, two 36 inch Marineland aquatic plant LEDs. Now these LEDs absolutely bug the s-h-i-t out of me yes i spelled the bad word um <laughs> because they're not like the castles where you have so much freedom to just enter your tank at any time no you don't you have to instead move them out of the way and oh my god they are really hot they they get really warm so that is you know why i just love the Kessel so much because look at see i can't I can't get in through the light. I mean, my hand cannot go through the light. But if we come over here, oh, look at that. I can get into the tank. Wow, I can grab plants. I can grab a fish. I can do whatever. I can just, I can reach right in. This, I can't do that in here, unfortunately. So yeah, can't do that. But you know what? They are really good LEDs. They do a great job at growing plants. As you can see, the plants are really healthy. Uh, so, you know, they work, but do I like the overall, you know, traditional strip light design? No, I don't because I do not have a lot of space or access into my aquarium and being that these are holding tanks and I'm in and out all the time. That sounds kind of wrong in and out all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. Now, 
I'm also using uh, an a, uh, Eheim Skimmer 350 on this tank as well. So I have two of them actually, one over there and one over here. And once again, does a great job of skimming the surface and keeping the surface nice and clear. For substrate, same thing, using silica sand. I used to use EcoComplete in this tank, but I switched over because uh, it's just so much better, you know, so much cleaner. Um, so that's that for this tank. Uh, and I'm also doing the same thing with the, uh, the little pipe there for the inlet back into my aquarium. Now we will venture into the dark side. Okay, now underneath the 80 gallon, you will see my five pound CO2 tank. And yes, that is the same Aquatech CO2 regulator that I made a video about years ago. <laughs> it is still working, still does a great job. All that I needed to do was replace the solenoid because that did fail on me. And Aquatech replaced it absolutely free of charge, which was awesome. Thank you, Aquatech of California. And uh, by the way, Aquatech is... Uh, is in Long Beach, which, which isn't that uh, far from me, so uh, the repair took like literally no time at all. <laughs> the, the regulator was shipped out one day and I got it literally the next day, so they were very fast as far as fixing it, so thanks again Aquatech. Highly recommend this regulator. Uh, you can find it on their website, it does a great job. Uh, like I said, it hasn't failed on me for years except the solenoid, which I don't know still why that failed. I wish I did, but uh, cannot figure it out. I'm also using a, a, an accessory that Aquatech sells. It's a splitter that splits the single CO2 output into two lines. So I can put a CO2 line going to this tank and then one going into my 80 gallon tank. I don't know why I switched accents there. I guess I'm just having fun. So yeah, that is for that is CO2. Over here we got my timer, which uh, you know turns the lights off and on. I'm sure you guys could have figured that one out yourself. <laughs> and a power bar down there that I'm not using because everything is plugged in at the moment to illuminate everything. And oh, this is kind of sad. <laughs> this is uh, this is my paintball tank. Yes, I used to use a paintball tank to inject CO2 in my aquarium, but uh, sadly I have not used it for a while, and I think it's sad because it sees that big five pound tank over there and it's like, <laughs> you never, you no longer use me. I miss you, Jacob. I want to be a part of your aquarium again. I feel bad. <laughs> I had a lot of history with these things. I remember going to the paintball shop all the time, filling them up, talking to the guys down there about aquariums and stuff. And now I just get my CO2 delivered to me by a company. It is pretty boring the way I get CO2 now. <laughs> But anyways, that is what is uh, below the 80 gallon. Now as far as filtration, same thing. I got a Hydor Model 450 cash filter going on this tank. Uh, this is one that I actually have had for uh, since the start of, uh, of my 80 gallon and even a little bit into my 50 gallon when we moved here to this new apartment. So this one has been with, with, with me the longest and uh, still has not failed once. It is so reliable does a great job, nothing has broken on it, all the clamps and everything are still very strong, no leaks, I mean it's just an awesome filter, highly recommend it. Um, to inject CO2, same thing, it's the Max Mix CO2 reactor, so you, you can see that I pretty much got the same setup on both tanks, and I did that because why do I need to change it if they work already, you know? <laughs> so that's that, that's a little inside look at both of my holding tanks. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments regarding anything that you've seen in this video, my two holding tanks, filtration systems for these tanks, whatever it is, leave a comment below and I will respond as soon as I can.